shot in front of a live audience at Margarita Republic. It's Shots from the Bench. And now your hosts, Bob Waltman and Bob Murphy. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of Shots from the Bench. It's only sports talk, and of course, all opinions are both fabulous and flawed. I'm Bob Wiltman. He's Bob Murphy. Greg Malinzuk's producing the show. He's behind the cameras. He's playing with the uh, volume knobs, and you never know what you're going to get with Greg, but he's act back here doing a great job. We're here at Margarita Republic in the beautiful Spanish Springs section of the villages. Margarita Republic, where the food, fun, and fellowship are always seated first. We're here every Sunday afternoon, so come on over, in, down, around, however you can get here and join us. We're here 2 to 3 every Sunday, and if not, you can check us on YouTube at Shots from the Bench. And, of course... Shots from the Bench is the only sports talk show in the villages. And that being said, partner, uh, the uh, NCAA is off to a flying start. What, are your, what is your take on the game so far? Well, we're down to half the field of the Sweet 16, aren't we? And uh, all, my and, uh, favorites, all my favorites are gone. <laughs> <laughs> all your favorites are gone. <laughs> Indiana. Go, Indiana, the, Indiana. The Hoosiers. That's right. Well, you know, they're... Uh, they're fighting. They're, they they may have one more game to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, we what we got. There, Indiana is in. Yes. To the Sweet Sixteen. You better um, believe it. And they beat Ken, a good Kentucky team. They beat Kentucky um, and beat them uh, fairly handily. Not handily, but they were in control. It's been a I different thought. year this year. You know, you don't see the Kentuckys and uh, you know in there uh, making it happen. But uh, yeah, uh, the top the top eight, um, top sixteen. We've got half the field already. Indiana. Uh, Gonzaga beat a good Utah team. Um, they, 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 they dismantled a good Utah team. Yeah. You had to be very impressed with Gonzaga. Uh, have you seen that guy Sabonis for? Yes. For, uh, Gonzaga? I had not seen him before the tournament. A, I got to admit that. I mean, he's, he's a monster. He is a, a, a pillar. <laughs> to say he's going to be a good NBA player. Oh, he'll be a great you NBA know? player, yeah. and he'll play for a long time Absolutely. if he stays healthy. My and, gosh. Uh, of course, um, North Carolina. Uh, with Providence, they, they had a little tough time with them in the first half. Very impressive, though. Um, You're right. They they ran right, right. But they warmed down. Right past them, yeah. Warmed down and uh, started hitting their shots and, 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 you know, getting a lot of easier points inside. Uh, Kansas over UConn. That wasn't a surprise. UConn no. had to win their, their – uh, Conference championship. Get the, the hat American to UConn. UConn, would, you, about a month ago, you would have thought right. they're not even they're, they're in the NIT. Maybe. I mean, they sure. talk about uh, rallying the troops. They did it. Yeah. Well, Kevin Alley had them playing well yes. in, in tournament, and you know what? They have probably the top two or three best recruiting class going into next for this past year for next year. Uh, so watch out for UConn in the next couple Getting of years. Getting players has never been a problem for the men or the women right, at Especially UConn. the women. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, uh, UConn did all right. And uh, Kansas, number one seed. They are my number one pick to go all the way, by the way. I know that. I and know so, that. So um, that's not to say that someone else couldn't win. Well, I'd like to think you consider Vir Virginia still in there too, right? Yeah. Oh, oh sure. Okay. I'm getting. They're my next one. I'm going to talk about. <laughs> okay. Now. I just had now. to throw it in. They they beat. Uh, <laughs> they whooped up on on Butler. They did a pretty good job on Butler. I got to admit, you know? Butler's a pretty good team. Mm-hmm. So they're into the Sweet 16. Uh, Miami, uh, uh, Florida. Yes. Tell Miami, you what, they, I think they may be as impressive as anybody. Yeah. In the two games I saw them play, they very athletic team. They really are. They got they are they are they got some studs on that team. Yeah. There's no question. And uh, they beat Wichita State. Of course, uh, the Duke Yale game. That was the that was uh, probably the smartest game. And I heard I heard after the game they all went back and took some uh, they took their law boards all together. <laughs> well, I thought that was a good idea. No, I'm just teasing, of course. Yeah, but they're I, the smart. <laughs> that was the smartest <laughs> that's game. That's the IQ game right there. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, but yeah, let's just say a little bit about Yale while we're while we're talking about them here. The Eli's. The, during the past week, they for, not only did they make the tournament for the first time in 54 years, but they won their first game ever over Baylor, num Baylor, a number five seed. So that was impressive. What an and accomplishment then, that is. Yeah. For an Ivy League school, and you know how limited they've got to be in their yeah. recruiting of players, sure. that they can go and they can beat mm -hmm. a team like Baylor with all the athletes yeah. they have. Sure. That's amazing. So that was a, a you know expected loss by them, but but still, they that's a, for that team, that's a good run. To win one game in the NCAA, to make it and then win a game. That's, so that was good. That's going to be tough to beat next year for them, but that is one great accomplishment. Iowa State is the uh, 
was the other one beating Arkansas Little Rock. Uh, Little Rock had beaten Purdue. Yeah, brought them back down number to Number five seed. So that was a good another situation where a team like that made the tournament, got a win over over a number five seed. So that was pretty good for them. And they were and they were down. <coughs> I think I might be wrong, but I think they were down like fourteen points with five minutes to go. So right. I I'm sure I'm sure Purdue's not happy about it. But right. uh, you got to just uh, you uh, got to be so happy for the Arkansas guys. Sure. That's great. So those are your. Eight that are in now, and I believe uh, Villanova has has completed that win. Yeah, they're so they're, they're the ninth of the sixteen. Beating they, up on Iowa they today. Beat up on uh, on Iowa. Yeah, just a little while ago. So there's nine in of the sixteen as we speak, and we're going to be hearing more as the as the afternoon goes. Oh, we'll out. Get, yeah, we'll get some updates, but that one I think is uh, the, pretty much in the hopper. Of course, it would be remiss of us not to mention the biggest upset of the past week, which could be potentially. We'll see how history plays it out. But one of the biggest upsets of all time, and that is uh, uh, Michigan State losing to Middle Tennessee in the first round. And that's uh, Michigan a 15 seed to a two seed. And Michigan State was this close to being a one seed. I mean, yeah. oh, so yeah. that's how yeah, that's we were how well that. they were yeah. thought of. And mm -hmm. for Middle Tennessee State to actually beat them by nine. Yep. <laughs> I mean that that. That's just why the tournament, to me, right. nothing nothing compares to it. I was in a, a sports restaurant here in the Villages. Um, I forget what day it was, whatever day they were playing, obviously. Uh -huh. And uh, there was a group of guys with their with their Michigan State's <laughs> hat. And, they, and I literally, as I was walking out the door, I looked back, and they're all just sitting there with their mouths open. And they, they were just silent as can be. They just could not believe what they were watching. Well, it's, it's, <coughs> but unfortunately, that... That, in fact, can right. happen, but sure. you don't expect it's going to happen. Well, that's happen. what March Madness is all about. That's one, exactly one right. One game, anything can happen. I agree with that 100%. You know? And um, so that was, that was the biggest upset. So right now, uh, other, than the, um, other than the Villanova win already, getting in to add to the, the eight that we're in yesterday, yeah. we've got Mil – uh, let me see what you think about these games. Uh, Maryland and, and Hawaii – I gotta believe. I I know that California had lost their star player. I think yeah, he's two a days NBA draft. Uh, yeah, two days before the game. Type Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't obviously I haven't seen Hawaii mm -hmm. play, but I just gotta believe that Maryland, who I think is uh, loaded this year, probably bring good. enough to the table to I, win that one. I don't know if Maryland's gonna have any trouble with Hawaii. Here's here's one that uh, Xavier and Wisconsin. Wow. Uh, watching a little bit of Wisconsin beat up on Pitt, and neither of them were putting the ball. You could, they could, neither of them could throw it in the ocean. Uh, I would think Xavier's got a little too much team speed and athleticism for right, Wisconsin. I, agree with I that might one. be wrong. Sure. All right. So uh, we also have uh, Notre Dame and Stephen F. Austin. Yeah. Let's. And how about kudos to Stephen F. Austin for beating mm -hmm. what I thought was really a, a, a stacked team from West Virginia. Uh, for, there's a 14 t seed beating a three seed that yeah. I didn't see coming either. Right. But they gotta be good. I mean, I haven't seen them play, so right. I. But I gotta believe they got some. They got some real athletes on the that's team. A, what, that's a game there them? that. That's a game there that that you. It may not, they may beat Notre Dame. That's what I mean. I, I, I I've they, seen they Notre Dame play, and Notre Dame's obviously impressive. Yeah. They got off to a slow start <coughs> and then turned it on to beat Michigan. But I. I, is Steve, Stephen Austin's got to have some good players. <laughs> They're not doing it with mirrors. My no. goodness. No, here's one. Here's one. Another game that could be a win column for for the number 15 seed Middle Tennessee. They're playing Syracuse today. Is that the, is that who yeah. they got? Yeah. Middle I'll tell Tennessee. you what. Syracuse obviously got some. Uh, they have talent. a good, great history, but this year isn't the best of Pitt, years. Pitt beat them three times, and right. Pitt was okay, but not a real great team. Mm -hmm. But uh, they've, you know, on any given day, I guess. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, right. I'm, I'm rooting for Middle Tennessee uh, State. Let's see what happens. Sure. But uh, I expect Syracuse will win it. Another interesting game is the VCU Oklahoma game. Ooh, <laughs> now there, I'm, go I'm gonna pick an upset on that one. Believe yeah, it or not, gonna I'm gonna pick for Virginia Commonwealth. I don't know whether that's an upset or not. <laughs> well, that's okay. You agree with me then, because they're, they're. I'll tell good. you, VCU is, really has good. been has been playing the last few years. Their program is really incredible. It's, it's, in, it's, into the uh, NCAA's all a lot always. of time and and uh, playing uh, really wonderful into the, into the tournament as well. So uh, well, I'm I don't glad know to hear how you much say of an that upset that would be. I mean, yeah, that's, I, that's, I guess on the seating for yeah. the seating purposes, it would be. But uh, I think v, I think VCU is uh, sure. Well, Threat to be reckoned with. A lot of these games could go either way. Yeah. Uh, did I mention Oregon and St. Joe's? 
No. Probably skipped over that one for some well, reason. Well, and again, I'm not giving St. Joe's their due, but I just right. think Oregon's got a little yeah, too, much, they, uh, they're, too they're much speed. My, uh, through my sleeper pick. I know. I, I want to get into that a little bit, I know. Too. You're not so happy we with picked me sleeper picking pick. a number one. Well, what do you think of a guy pick? that, as a sleeper pick, picks a number one seed? I thought, wait a minute. Wait well, a Kansas minute. Kansas is my number one. <laughs> okay. I'm with you on that. And also, yeah, no. I've asked for Mulligan on my sleeper pick because if I'd have known when I picked it last week that Texas was playing Northern Iowa, never would I have picked Texas, right, but right, right. I would have picked Northern Iowa. So I'm, I'm transferring my sleeper. Sure. I get a Mulligan. Absolutely. Northern Iowa is my team. And the, the other game <laughs> this afternoon that's uh, going to decide you know who the rest of the Sweet 16 is, it's, uh, is Northern, Ireland, uh, Northern Iowa, Iowa against Texas a and I'll tell you what. I'm, I'd be, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm, you got to watch out for these I'm going to go with Northern Iowa. I'm going with them. I'm telling you. I think Texas A&M can be very good, but it can, they can also be very bad. So There's just not any clear-cut wins no. some, except for maybe Oregon, Xavier. That's right. Uh, Villanova's winning. There's no gimmies. Uh, and, of course, before that game, I couldn't tell you that Villanova would clean the clocks of uh, right. Iowa, but they did. And this, I, and this is a guessing game. Oh, We're yeah. just guessing. You know, We're doing the best we can. Uh, so get off our backs. Out. We're doing the best yeah. we can. If you don't like it, <laughs> go to another show. <laughs> but uh, yeah. hey, I go. wanted to ask you a question. Yes, um, sir. Fri- or, or tell you something. Do we have time for this? Friday, we something something minute. happened Friday that hasn't happened in the NCAA tournament ever. You alluded to it. Let's hear it. I like this. this Friday, one. for the first time in NCAA history, uh-huh. fresh hot off the press right here, you had a, a number two number three, and number four seed lose on the same day. It's never happened before. Two, I was gonna say, that three, and four. That's, 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 that's really something. You wouldn't expect that would ever happen. But I got more for you. I'm ready. I got more. Also Friday, for the first time, a number 13, 14, and 15 seed won for the first time on the same day. Okay. I think that's the same thing happening, but I'm going to go with it. I like it. I like it. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, yeah, the very fact that a number two seed lost is something that mm-hmm. has happened so infrequently. Well, that's it, never happened. In, that's what I mean. Just a so, little tidbit there. So I like that tidbit. So uh, with that in mind, and while I'm trying to clear my head from all that excitement, we will be back with the second quarter of Shots from the Bench and some NBA yakking right after this. And now the second quarter of Shots from the Bench with your hosts, Bob Wiltman and Bob Murphy. We are back with the second quarter of Shots from the Bench here from Margarita Republic in the beautiful Spanish Spring section of the villages. Margarita Republic, where the food, fun, and fellowship are always seated first. And partner, uh, I think we did a pretty good job covering the NCAA, but there's still a lot of basketball to be discussed, and that means... The NBA season's winding down, and we're oh, yeah. starting to see how things are falling oh, yeah. out. Sure. What do you got? Well, before I get into that real quick, sure. there was one thing I wanted to mention bef- uh, with, uh, associated with the NCAAs I wanted to talk okay. about real quick. One little thing, and I think I talked to, a little bit to you about off-camera, was the fact who was the last senior, a college senior drafted, and I mentioned it, we already talked about it, yeah. who was the last college senior drafted in the NBA draft? And, uh, it Which I didn't, get, I didn't get right, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get it right. So, but I gave you the answer, so I'm yes, going to have to well, say it out here. But just so again. those out in, out in uh, Netherworld or whatever I like they are, the wherever they Nether regions. Nether regions. <laughs> um, it's 2000 Kenyon Martin, Kenyon Cincinnati Martin, Bearcat. The tattooed Kenyon Martin. When I heard that the other day, I was like, wow, we haven't had a college senior picked in the NBA draft for 16 years. That's, That's pretty amazing. Cool. Amazing. Well, amazing. we had so many. You know, you got to look at it like we've had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, freshmen. Like a lot of these Kentucky kids come out. You know, they're one and done. You know, they played their freshman year there, and they come in. Then you had guys like LeBron James who came in. Um, out of high school. Out of high school. <laughs> and then you got a lot of foreign players come in, you know, uh, as well. So, you know, combination of that. But uh, rarely do we see any seniors come all the way through and be a number one pick. It sounds like it. That's, uh, so. that's, that's, that's amazing. 
I, I couldn't believe that's that when you it told me. It doesn't have to be a number one pick. Just, just draft No, but it, now as I think know. of it, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But it's still, right. it's hard to believe. It's been uh, 15, 16 years since we did that. Sure. Well, I just wanted to get that out of there before we completely get away from the uh, NCAA. Is there? Bring it on. But, uh, okay, NBA. Uh, getting down to the last, uh, you know, 12, 13 games here. And I'll start and watching. Things are starting this, to get serious. This is when I like to We're watch the NBA. This, I don't watch it that much during the season, but now right. I really get interested in it. Right. Well, last night we had probably the biggest game of the year uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, the Spurs and the Warriors, of course, number one and number two in the Western Conference. Uh, they've been neck and neck all season long, although the, the Warriors have had pretty much the better of that uh, until last night. Right. Um, Last night, the Spurs uh, <clears throat> had their uh, season-long unbeaten streak uh, going into that game, and uh, and what a better team to try and stop them would be the Warriors, right? Well, guess what? The uh, war the Spurs took it to them, 87 to 79, and uh, and Lamar what is that now? 44? Is that 44 straight home games? Yeah, I believe won? it's. Can you? That's that's more well, than half. Well, including going back to last year. But that's still. But that's that's yeah. that's more than half a season. That's yeah. that's uh, that's home court advantage right, right. there. Sure. <laughs> and you know, the Spurs are that type of team. You know, they, they may be three, four games back, but you know, uh, Greg Popovich will rest his players during the season. You yeah. know, he he'll give Parker, Ginobili, Duncan. A day off here, a day off fresh. there. Keep he's not fresh. concerned. As long as he's in the top t one or two yeah. of of the conference, they're gonna they're not worried about whether they're one or two. But I'll tell you, when they start getting serious, and it, it's a shame that one of these two teams is not going to make it to the NBA Finals this year. Uh, one of them is gonna lose, and because the Spurs are having their best season ever, regular season wise, and of course the Warriors are doing up 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 ticking what they did last year. But it's a, it's a shame one of them is not going to make it because they're the two best teams. It is a, it is a shame, but like as you know, yeah. I'm a I'm a dynasty <clears throat> guy, so I'm right. still I'm still rooting for. Uh, I think Golden State still has an opportunity to right. get the greatest record of all time for sure. a season, and I still think they're going to pull it off. They are to me just uh, in the, a, a little class yeah. above everybody else in the league. In that Western Conference, uh, the Spurs are number two behind the Warriors. Then you got the Thunder. The Clippers, the Grizzlies, Trailblazers, who have been moving, moving up the board. As I mentioned, they're number six. They were out of it like three weeks ago. I remember you saying and, that. And uh, yeah. with with uh, C.J. McCollum and and uh, Darian uh, I mean, Lillard, uh, Damian right? Lillard, Lillard, that guy's good. Formed the best, one of the best top three backcourts in the Western Conference. Uh, the Rockets and the Mavs, you know, kind of just they're treading water. They're leaking oil, is what they're doing. Treading water, you know. <laughs> so the top eight make the playoffs. The Rockets and the Mavs are seven and eight, half game back of the Jazz, half game. So, watch out for those three teams. You, you, one of them three teams isn't going to make it. Yeah. The, you know, the Jazz are only a half game back. So that's about the only thing. And, and really, what's your reward for getting into the playoffs? First seeds. <laughs> you get to play the Warriors or the Spurs in you the can't seventh. Beat it. Isn't that wonderful? Can't beat that. So basically, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> You know, so uh, another thing, um, the Warriors with the loss last night, um, they, t in order to beat the, the Bulls all time record of 72 wins, they have to go in the last 13 games, they have to go 11 and two. Now, they've lost two games in the last week and a half to the to the Lakers, which was a surprise. And then last night to the Spurs. But as we mentioned earlier off camera. There's no better team to re respond after a loss than the Warriors. I, I I'm <coughs> still confident they're gonna they're gonna pull it off. Right. I, I think so. They gotta go that, eleven and two. I think they're that good that they can do that. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, no problem. But I think that's uh, you know that's a great observation. They, they I think the I think yeah. the Warriors really really are a, a, a cut above everybody else. Yeah. And when they got their guys, and they're missing the one guy, and I can't pronounce his name that we talked uh, about. Andre Ignagala. Yeah, thank you. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. Well, I he think. provides such offensive spark and explosiveness off the bench. And not only that, he, he, he's a great passer, rebounder, slasher. Yeah. Uh, gets people involved. So that's why he's so, so it's a good, important force on that, you know, on their team. I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty confident that. Uh, yeah. That uh, Golden State's going to get the record. Not that they're going to try to get it. I just think they're going to get it because they're that good. Right. 
Okay, in the Eastern Conference, uh, we have uh, the Cavs uh, and the Raptors. Now, uh, the Cavs are 49 and 20. They've been in first place all year, but as we mentioned again off camera, uh, the Raptors are only a half game back. Raptors really, really are good. I, I Every time I watch them play, I mean, yeah. they're. Those guards they have are just absolutely I'll tell you, incredible. That seems to be the one of the biggest things going on in the NBA now with the three-point shooting and the, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the assist. You know, De, uh, Demar Derozan and um, Lowry and Low, Kyle oh, Lowry. Gosh. Oh my God, uh, what a backcourt! That's Where definitely the best backcourt in the Eastern Conference. That I've um, seen. That I frankly that I've seen yeah. in a, uh, a while. I mean, I yeah. think they're that good. Right. I, I haven't seen a backcourt. Yeah, well, they're getting better as they play. The more years they play oh, together, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So they're they're creeping up. There's no guarantee the Cavs are going to get that number one seed. No, in the there East. sure isn't. Um, the Heat are s- s- a few steps back. But another interesting point when you start getting further down in the Eastern Conference standing, the the, the Miami Heat and the Atlanta Hawks are tied for for the third spot, and the Celtics. And the Hornets are tied for the fifth spot or fourth spot, wow. whichever way you want to win. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and um, so uh, that's interesting, too. And uh, those last two teams, Pacers and Pistons, just kind of treading water. Pistons kind of work their way into the, into the mix. Uh, I think they're going to stay there. Uh, the Bulls keep fading. They faded out of the top eight. They're I just in number nine I, right now. I don't think they're going to make it. And the Wizards are disappointing, too. Oh boy, the Wizards! You know, they, they've wizards got a, are, wizards you know, with John are Wall and uh, and Bradley Beal and very some of their big guys. They've got. I, I thought they would play better than a than a one under five hundred team. They've been more than probably the most disappointing team in the Eastern Conference. They don't, but I watch them. They don't. They don't play a real good team concept. I have nothing against yeah. John Wall, but it's pretty much clear out. Let him do stuff with the ball and sure. and see where it takes him. Some day, some days right. great. Some days not so great. So, uh, you know, uh, like I said, the playoffs start. You, you don't want to be the, the seventh and eighth seeds in either conference. Um, no. <laughs> you're gonna have to play, in the Eastern, you're going to have to play the Cavs or good, the Raptors. Good luck. Yeah, good in, luck in, if you, at their home court. You come in eighth or seventh, good luck. Right. You're gonna but be, it's getting down to it, and uh, we're getting down, down to a fun time real soon here. Oh, it's, we'll be having, uh, in another week or so, we'll be ha- in two weeks, actually, two weeks from now, Two weeks from today, I believe it is, is opening day in Major League Baseball. Woo-hoo. Pretty sure. That's, Holy that's mackerel. Today, pretty sure. I'll tell you what, and I can't, and I'm still wrapped up with the NCAA, yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up for baseball to so be sure. So we got sure. opening day of Major League Baseball the same time as the NBA playoffs begin. Whoa. Think we'll have something to talk about? Wow. That's, uh, that's I impressive. Hope so. you know, we have something to talk about. And while we were talking about the NBA, yeah. I, I, I mentioned this to you, and I wanted to see uh, you get your take on it. There's a player, I think it's Marvin, I, w- I want to say Marvin Barnes, but I, that might be an old. Matt uh, Barnes. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Barnes. And Matt Barnes uh, had his shot blocked by John Henson, a player. Uh, Who's a good shot blocker Milwaukee. from Milwaukee, yeah. And I guess after he did it, he uh, trash talked his. Uh, Way into Matt Barnes, where he got a couple technicals and a suspension. Bottom line, the whole thing is, after the game's over, uh, uh, Barnes decided that it wasn't over, so he actually went over and broke his way into the Milwaukee Bucks dressing room and did everything he could to get at this John Henson. Now you know the players better than I do. I wonder if his buddy Derek Fisher was with him. <laughs> I just think, you know what, uh, it. There's something going on. There's something really wrong if you can't you, know, you can't put it behind you once the game's over. I, well, that's very. That's kind of childish. Uh, Matt Barnes has been in the league for ten plus years. Is that right? He's a oh, veteran, sure. a real veteran player. And, uh, that, that no, I really he's on my care. fantasy team, not because of the person he is, but because of the. But uh, you know, he's he. You know, to me, Matt Barnes is kind of like. Remember you mentioned a few weeks ago. You know, Allen Iverson type player. Oh yeah. Player. No, okay. He kind of yeah. reminds me of that kind of a of a player. You know. Uh, it's almost you know, like, that like, type a, like of a street, ga- like a gang mentality type. Not that thing. kind of player, but you know, like the people he hangs out with. Yeah, and that's stuff. Well, that's the, you know that's uh, <clears throat> that's not a good thing to be compared to, yeah. frankly. If you have if you're being compared right. to uh, that's the way it Alan seems Iverson, to I'm not gang ganging up on Allen Iverson, but uh, Iverson to me always seemed very detached from the game right. itself. As great a player as he was, and this guy's obviously taking things way too so personally. He, he went and attacked someone at the he, tr- he tried to get at Henson. He broke he broke into the Milwaukee Bucks dressing room, which was guarded. And I think he said something, I got something for somebody and they said, Well oh, he could have he could have easily been arrested for this well, type that's, of thing. Well that's I that, uh, not to mention this. I know also, he got suspended. He's for got one he game. got a one game suspension and hopefully and that's a lot of money the way these guys 
Yeah. I, I don't know how much, but it'll make him. It'll, it'll, I don't think he'll do it again. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. That guys, you know, that that that's very immature. Besides stupid. Good grief! It's, this isn't a playground yeah. game. You're getting you're getting paid big bucks. You're gonna have to take it if somebody gives you a diss. But uh, well, well like, the, I, the the Derek Fisher thing that, that that's yeah. real red flags when it comes to Matt Barnes. Now, he drove. You know, there was a problem between. I believe uh, Derek Fisher was dating his ex-wife. Oh, boy. This is this is what the reason Derek Fisher got fired from the from the Knicks because of all this controversy and all this stuff. But, I'll tell you what, we're, we're I want to yeah. hear this. We're going to yeah. we're uh, we're going to talk about this and come out and get it after in the third quarter, but uh, we've run out of time for the second quarter, but we'll be back. Uh, I want to hear about this. Uh, I love these type of articles and stories. So we'll be back with the third quarter and pick up on this, so stay tuned. This is like we call this a cliffhanger. We'll oh, be back yeah. for the third quarter of Shots from the Bench right after this. I like this. Yeah, he, he <laughs> drove. He drove from Memphis all the way to New York. To go beat him up. And now the third quarter of Shots from the Bench with your hosts, Bob Wiltman and Bob Murphy. We are back with the third quarter of Shots from the Bench here at Margarita Republic in the beautiful Spanish Spring section of the Villages. And uh, I'm uh, waiting with bated breath because I love these type of stories, and I'm sorry, but uh, the clock ran out of us in the first half. So f finish up the story. Now that Derek Fisher, all sorts of people are involved in this Barnes thing. I want to hear about well, it. Well, it brings up other issues, you know, when I you, love when it. you talk about Matt Barnes. Uh, Okay, you mentioned Brett, Matt Barnes got in this altercation, got a suspension yes. for, for going into the locker room trying to beat some, beat some guy up. John beat Henson, Henson yeah. up, which I think whatever you was kind of a dumb idea anyway. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, um, there's a history in the last few weeks, last few months with Matt Barnes, uh, maybe even more than that. But in the NBA this year, uh, there was a problem between him and Derek Fisher, the former coach of the former Knicks, coach of the, uh, yeah. who was fired like about a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Not even a couple months ago. Well, Fisher, the ex-coach of the Knicks, was dating his ex-wife. So they used to be friends. They used to be <laughs> friends. And uh, so they're no longer friends. And he's dating his ex-wife. But it is, that, an, it is an ex-wife. Yes. It's an ex-wife yes. like divorce ex-wife. Right. Okay. Sure. And still, it caused bad blood. How could you date my ex-wife? You know, it, whatever. That's their problem. <laughs> because she's not married. But, but, but sorry, anyway, okay. so it got, got pretty hot <laughs> and heated. And uh, you know, they when they, he was with his ex-wife, he broke in and tried to beat him. And be, actually, they had a fight wherever that was in Memphis, or where, I don't think it was in Memphis, but uh, L.A. wherever it was. So they had this big fisticuff thing, and, and then they were bragging who won the fight and all this other stupidity. Of whatever. Well, anyway, you mentioned Matt Barnes going in and breaking into a, a locker room trying to get at this guy. Well, he drove, he drove from Memphis to New York looking for Derek Fisher to beat him up. And I'm they thinking, you just gave me a story that's very similar, only into the, you know, it's the same type of thing. That's and that's, so the, it was with these people. That's you know, nuts. That's, that's not. That's nuts, frankly. And don't tell and, him and, I said that because he'll with, come and beat me up. I mean, I, and but, what was with <laughs> Derek? I know, what was with Derek Fisher? Uh, in his brain, you know, he has a history of kind of like dating or, or <laughs> cheating on, with or dating uh, other guys on the team's girlfriends and wives behind their back. Well, that's you know, that's that's this that, is this is what I hear. That's an entirely different. This is problem what was in the basketball. New York Post and the New York. Daily well, News. That's that's, uh, and one of the reasons that he got let go. I mean, you can't have that kind of a situation on your team. That's a validation. And then you had this problem. Matt Barnes thing that you mentioned, and he and he did a sim similar thing, you know, before the start of the season, driving all the way to New York to beat to beat up Derek Fisher. So, man, these, what this tells me crazy. is, you all think you've got problems. There's hmm. people making five million dollars a year. They got the same problems you do. <laughs> so that's right. that's, I'm just saying that's uh, that's unbelievable. But uh, I, I appreciate that. That's an interesting story. Some people make some people make money and better their lives and and, and, and use it to better their them, their their this person their personhood too. They, they become good people. Other people doesn't even they affect. seem to get worse. Yeah, it doesn't even affect. You know, they hang out with the wrong crowd and they just you know they're just. Well, I'll tell you what, people. enough of that. And I, and I really yeah. appreciate well, you, you finish you up on that. So. But uh, on the plus side, you mentioned uh, in the last quarter that uh, we are a couple weeks away from yep. baseball time. The oh, sure. uh, Major League Baseball is coming on. Oh, yeah, that's and, exciting. And uh, 
Now that I think all of the big free agent plays have been made and uh, the teams are pretty much as teams are going to be going into the beginning of the season, it's time for us to do our famous walk the gangplank and see if we can come up with some uh, selections for the best teams in each division and then take it all the way down through the uh, team that's going to win the World Series. It's a long way off. There's going to be a lot of injuries, a lot of problems, lots of trades. But, hey, so that's the fun of it. you got to start somewhere. you got to so start let's, somewhere. Let's do it. So uh, pick your league and we'll go there. Which one you want first? Let's go the, the our favorite league. National, National League. League. I love that. Okay. Well, you got the East, of course, and to me, you got two teams that are uh, mm -hmm. com competitive. You got the Mets. You got the Nationals. And I'm I'm sold on the Mets. I think the Mets have really solidified themselves. Well, on paper. Yes. Uh, you yes. know, and, you know, you can you can have it all lined up, and all of a sudden, the guys don't perform for whatever reason. Uh, they you know they're. Coming off an injury, they don't feel well. They don't. Well, they got the pitcher. Time. Who they knows? They got the pitchers. They lost Murphy. They put in a guy in Neil Walker, who's almost a spitting image of Murphy, and maybe a tad, tad of an better defensively. A tad of yeah. an upgrade. So right. that that, is, that ain't all bad. Well, I mean, they brought in. Plus, uh, you know, they've got those. Uh, last year, they only had. They were only a 500 team up until the All Star break. Yeah. And then they brought in Cespedes, and uh, and then they they got some players back, pitchers and. And uh, uh, regular regular players, uh, field players, yeah. And um, they went on a tear and just wiped out the national nationals the rest of the season. Now they're going into the season with all those players back, with all those young pitchers, with some seasoning behind them. The pitching with, to uh, me really makes them uh, the prohibitive favorite right. favorite in that division because they got some guys who can throw the ball through a wall, and they're all like 25 and younger. Well, they, that's They've got a number one starter coming at you. All five of their starters are would be a number one starter on most teams. No question about it. I and agree so, with that. So you know you're looking at you don't have any downgrade hardly at all when you go from one one game to the next. Uh, and then they got uh, they've even got um, uh, Zach Wheeler coming back, who two years ago was a 17 game winner, uh, coming off Tommy John. He didn't play last year. He's coming back into the mix. But he, he's even uh, he's an unknown, and even with I mean, if if he's if he's what he was, then that's a real upgrade. But if he's not, say Zach Wheeler doesn't materialize. Well, you still got Bartolo Colon in, still, the, fifth, in they, the fifth spot. Yeah, they so still got they still got an unbelievably good uh, <laughs> yeah. pitching staff, and right. their lineup is uh, their lineup is, is sneaky good. I think yeah. uh, they got some guys that can stick well, the ball off Cespedes sure. gets hot. I don't expect him yeah. to carry the team like he did every. Right. But I'll tell you what. They got some solid players in all the right spots, and I think they're if, if Wright stays healthy, they got they got a legitimate uh, chance to win the series. They were, yeah. uh, they're some strong. of their they brought in some players like you mentioned uh, Walker, and uh, they uh, you know their their bottom half of their lineup has has improved. You know that was it was not a uh, offensive threat. Their whole team wasn't an offensive threat for first half of last year. Right. But now you know, uh, but their back half uh, with uh, Conforto. Uh, growing, becoming yeah, a much better player, playing for a whole year. That should improve that back half. Uh, and also they picked up, uh, what was that guy's name, Cabrera? Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. The uh, shortstop. As, as Drew Bull, the 16 as home Drew run Bull guy Bull, to, to, yeah. to, to, to platoon with Flores. He's, I forgot about him. I think he's very good. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is they didn't lose anything. Right. They they lost Murphy, replaced him with uh, Walker. They lost Nice and replaced them with nobody because they had five right. stud pitchers in the waiting. So mm -hmm. uh, moving on that division, but that, I mean that they, yeah, they the just, Nationals are are have lost a couple players, added a couple. They got of course uh, Daniel Murphy's going to be the, their second baseman. Uh, he's a good hit, good hitter. He's all right. <clears throat> you know, I just, uh, uh, Bryce Harper one of the, might be the best player in the National League. Might be. So uh, their pitching is still pretty good. So they're not a they're not a pushover. That's for sure. I well, mean, they, they aren't. They are definitely going to be battling. But that's a two team race, and I right? think the Mets win that hand down. Sure. So uh, and what's the next one? The, uh, well, the Central, Central. I think we both agree on that one. That that's the Cubs. Uh, have Cubs. Really uh, you got the Pirates. Uh, I didn't see the Pirates do anything to really improve themselves. They no. didn't. They 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 patched holes that uh, in players that they lost. But right. I the Cubs to me are really the prohibitive. Some, yeah favorite in that uh, division. Well, they picked up uh, 
Jason, just Jason Hayward. They, yeah, they just. Uh, who else did they pick up? They a lot of, of solid stuff. players. I mean, they just several they, players. They've 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 picked up a lot of good players. They kept all the, the good right ones spot. they had already. Yes, that's what I mean. They didn't you know? they didn't give up much. Mm -hmm. So they got so a couple good new pitchers. Team. They're going to be tough. Yep. And even uh, that Fowler guy, the, Dexter they, they resigned him. He was He's their like center the fourth. Field. He was their he was their weak, weakest <clears throat> link in their lineup last year. He had 250 with 16 homers. They signed him anyhow as a backup. So what the heck? He's a very good, very good center fielder. Yeah, he's a great center fielder, but they got, uh, they're just, uh, they're just loaded. So, right. um, so then out west, you've got uh, San Francisco. San Francisco, Arizona. Dodger, Arizona's Arizona. right with them. Arizona. The Dodgers are right with Dodgers them. Dodgers lost, you know, they lost uh, Grunke. Um, I think the Dodgers think them didn't improve themselves as much as I thought they right. were going to. San Francisco I, had some injuries toward the end of last year, uh, and they improved their bullpen. Watch out for them. Well, they uh, were missing Kane. They were missing a couple of their star right. pitchers. Now they're back healthy. I don't know how they're going to respond, but uh, yeah. apparently the Diamondbacks and the Giants are going to be fighting it out. And Diamond don't backs. know, don't Grinke, know enough did about Grinke them. Did Granky go to the Diamondbacks? Gran Granky is with the Diamondbacks, right. and apparently with their lineup, they're they're uh, loaded for bear and the favorites out there. Right. So, so you got to watch out for uh, Arizona and San Francisco out there. Though that's between those two, I think. And okay, well, it's National League. Let's uh, shoot over the American League now. Let's go <coughs> to this. Is it the Central with Kansas City and Houston? Uh huh. Uh, anybody think Kansas City's not looking good? I think they're looking pretty darn looking good. Good. Uh, are they <laughs> as good as uh, last year? Maybe not. Maybe quite. not. Maybe not quite. But yeah. I don't remember Houston going berserk. Sure. So but we'll Houston, Houston, I think is. Uh, going to be a quality team. Those two will battle it out. They off. need a couple pitchers. Houston needs a couple yeah. more really solid mm -hmm. pitchers on, to help out Keuchel, and I think they're going to go someplace. Right. And then the uh, in the East, okay, uh, the Toronto Yan with the their hitting. Red Sox, Yankees, and the, and the Blue Jays. Take your pick. Well, I'm, don't tell Greg, but I'm, we're not going to mention I, the I'm Yankees. I'm not picking the Yankees. The Yankees this year. <laughs> I'm it's, going, it's, it's Toronto and it's Boston. I think so. <laughs> Toronto and Boston. Those those are going to be fighting it out. That's right. The two teams will be fighting it out there. And out west, Texas Rangers, right? I mean, well, you know, I, I I keep thinking that the the Angels the are loaded, Whites, but the Rangers just uh, they they got nothing but great players up mm -hmm. and down up and down the lineup. I, I, I you know I, I just uh, find it fascinating. And they lost uh, Darvish, their pitcher. I mean, they've I know they got a couple good pitchers in the in the, in the waiting. I just think that. Uh, I just think that's that's. I don't know enough about the teams out west because I don't get to see them enough. But I know yeah. Texas is darn good. I know uh, the Angels are good. And I suspect with uh, King uh, Alex or Felix or whatever his name is, the Seattle's pro probably going to be half decent with Cano. I mean they they they're still loaded. Of course, when you think. start the season, everybody has hope. That's right. Everybody's nobody's the same five record. games back on April first, right. and if that's you're, the if you're hanging in there by the All Star break. And you, you're all excited. Well, I'll tell you what. We're, we're going to get to the fourth quarter. We're going to tell you a little bit about who we think is going to make it to the end. And we have a couple other little rants and things we want to talk about as well. So we'll be back with the fourth quarter of Shots from the Bench right after this. And now the fourth quarter of Shots from the Bench with your hosts, Bob Wiltman and Bob Murphy. Okay, we are back with the fourth quarter of Shots from the Bench. And as you know, uh, fourth quarter means it's time to wrap it up and uh, we've got everything in place. Uh, right now, partner, I think it's time for us to let the cat out of the bag and let's go all the way to the end and see what we think is going to take the, the, gonna make it the enchilada, World the big World Series winner. Yes. Okay, who's going to be in the World Series? Let's hear it. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. Go ahead. I'm going to pick out of the National League. Okay. I'm going to pick the Mets to make it to the World Series. That's, that's really risky. Go out on a limb. That was a risky one. <laughs> in the American League, that gets a little harder. Yeah, I agree with you. Um... Hmm. I think it's going to be either Texas or Toronto. You're not seeing a repeat from the Royals, huh? I'm not seeing a repeat from the Royals. Hmm. I think they're down a little bit from last year. They enough, aren't. enough so that so that Toronto could possibly get in. So I'm I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go with Toronto. All right. 
This is uh, unprecedented. And then the, the best hitting team in the, net, in the in Major League Baseball against the best pitching team in the World Series. So who do you like? Oh, who I like to win that game? Yeah. Woo. Um, I'm going to go with the Mets. This is really is Mets and six. This is unprecedented, folks, because spring in training each we're category, I agree with my partner. No way. I think the Mets are going to win the National League. Are you okay? I think the pitchers. <laughs> I think their pitching is uh, just way too good, and they've got yeah. with Walker and Sis, but they got a lineup that's uh, actually pretty formidable if Wright stays healthy, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> In the American League, yeah, the same deal. I, I think it's uh, Toronto. Well, they're definitely by far the best hitting team in the in the American League. Well, that was um, a piece of cake. I thought we were going to get into a big discussion. We throw down the gloves, but uh, they even know how to bat flip. Real I'll good. tell you what. And, and last thing, while we're on baseball, before we get into our others, we have one other bit on yeah, it. But yeah. let's uh, time to pick the MVP in each league. Uh -huh. I think it's time. Let's well, you, you go to the American League. I'll give you the American League. I would think that it's going to be Donaldson. Josh, Josh Donaldson. Donaldson. Yes. I mm -hmm. think he's going to have uh, another breakout year and pick the average up a little bit. I right now think he's probably the most feared hitter in the, uh, yeah. in the American League, and I, so I think he's going to be the guy. I think A-Rod's going to be the – no, just joking. <laughs> just, just joking. Just joking. No, you know, I, I like that pick, actually. Well, good. I do. I like that pick. Uh, Are you going with it? No, uh, you're going to do the National League. You don't I'm have to gonna, worry. I'm, I'm going to go – well, I'm – We're sounding like, sound like we're just uh, crawling up each other's backs here. <sighs> but uh, who do you like? Okay, in? I'm going to go with uh, – I'm going to go with Paul Goldsmith. I think that's a great choice. That guy, <clears throat> Goldsmith, to me uh, – if Harper wasn't around, he wins it last year. <clears throat> and – uh, I think Arizona's going to have a pretty good season. I think he's going to get a lot of publicity. Yeah. and People are going to find out just how productive and good that guy Tremendous is. Tremendous hitter. That's a great choice. I wouldn't yeah. have picked him because, like every year, I forget well, about you know, him. Well, you know, he's not, he doesn't get a lot of uh, publicity. He's, not, he's no. playing for a team that doesn't get on national TV that much. Just Yeah, it's just but, like uh, that Felix Hernandez out in Seattle. People don't pay attention to him. And he's I, like a 348, 350 hitter, I'm, you know, I, home runs, RBIs. You know. I mean, he apparently does it all. I just don't get to see him. Unbelievable. And, but that's, uh, those are great choices. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. He still that. want to pick Bryce Harper anymore. No, he may still – he may repeat. Yeah. Here's a, an interesting story that I oh, wanted yeah. to talk to you about, and we talked about this off camera, off camera a little bit, but – uh, there was a player, and uh, there is a player, I should say, named Adam LaRoche. Now, Adam LaRoche has been a journeyman first baseman, but he's always been a starting player. Uh, 20, 25 homers, 75 RBIs, bats 270. But Adam LaRoche looks like he enjoys playing baseball about as much as he enjoys going for a root canal. Now, I know that probably doesn't endear him to the fans, but... I think he looks at baseball as his job, so he goes to the park every day and does it. But Adam LaRoche uh, had a contract he signed with the White Sox where they agreed to let him yeah. have his 13-year-old son come into the locker room on a regular basis. And now the, uh, the White Sox are trying to renege on that contract. Yep. And I guess half the players are backing LaRoche. I think the union's backing LaRoche, and half the players are backing the GM, what, what do you what do you think about that situation? Well, he, he signed a two-year, twenty-five million dollar contract with the White Sox. Had a verbal agreement prior to the contract with Vice President Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, yeah. Uh, that he'd be able to that his son, who who at, at who at the time was thirteen, he's 13, now fourteen. He's fourteen now. <clears throat> uh, that he was able to be able to hang out. So he hung out hung out with the team for one hundred and twenty games. Well. Well, apparently, you know, after 120 games, uh, they're having second thoughts about that because it was think, distraction. I would think I mean, it how, would be a huge distraction. Can you imagine everybody had their, their kid playing on the team and so forth and so on? It could, you know, even though it's great to have your kid around, the, the clubhouse and the, and, the, and the practices and the games and stuff, um, several players began to complain to management, like you mentioned. You should. I mean, and, I... Um, I, if I had somebody's kid hanging around all the time while so I was he, doing my work, I'd say, did you mention, why are you there? So Adam <laughs> LaRoche decided to retire and Wait, walk away from yeah, the final I don't think 13 he's, I don't million think of he's his been, contract. He hasn't been a jerk about this. No. He just said, okay, I'll, 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 no. I don't want my $13 million, right. but uh, he walked away I got to have my son millions with yeah. because his son couldn't be in the thing. Now, he's not mad at them. No. He still has a good relationship. He just thinks, I don't know. He's got to have it. He, <laughs> homeschool, he homeschools his son. I think... And uh, he right. brings his son to work, and 
I, I, it, it was a verbal agreement. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Verbal agreements can sometimes be broken. He, he, it wasn't that they didn't let him do it. They let him do it for a whole year. 120 games this kid was around. And, and you know what? A lot of them said, you know, he's a distraction. I, we always, we're always worried about what he's doing. Well, you or, can't say what you want to say. You can't. You can't. Right, you, you can't. You have to look around to see if he's there. I mean, right. And it's. That's, that's, I, I love kids being around baseball and all that, but you know, you, this is a business. Yeah, oh my gosh. And yeah. you've got to be able to concentrate on what you're doing. You can't be worried. Where's he? Where's he? Is he okay? Is Plus, he, if somebody wants to say something imagine? bad about his dad, maybe his right. dad had a lousy guy. I mean, but, uh, you got to be so careful. So he has a right to do what he wants. Can't offend the kid. I, sure. Adam LaRoche has a right to do whatever he wants to do. Absolutely. You know, but, you know, I think the club has a right to do what they want to do, too. If they have nothing written, they sure do. Right. If they wrote it, they, then the uh, union's going to come in. And I, I think it's silly to give up $13 million because your son can't be there. I mean, What's you that? Well, but you know what? And I agree with you. We well, have think, one of our one of yeah. our guests is just talking about he's got a more dedication to his family, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, it's just that uh, the uh, White Sox shouldn't have told him it was okay, and then changed their mind. Even though I would I would take the White Sox side in the sense that. Well, it wouldn't be good to have your kid around, but, but to LaRoche's credit, he's not mad at him. I don't he's think it's a saying, matter of being. He's not a, screaming, "Bay me!" He's just saying. I don't think it's a matter right. of being a family guy. I th no question. I think about a lot it. of guys on the teams are family guys. No question. All, all of them put their families as, as the but highest they point. But they probably don't but home, but you homeschool know, if their kids. Uh, you if know, you're so. the president of the United States, you can't have uh, your child. Oh, uh, in front, hey, running care. around the camera every every two seconds. You yeah. got to have some sort of protocol with your where your family's at and when you go see them and so forth and so on. I agree. And he, if he's yeah. a distraction to the organization and to the team, uh, not because he's a bad kid, just because he's in the way. You know, no. we're trying to we're trying to you know do something here. Well, your point, like I said, you know? we don't want to beat this. That the fact of the matter is, yeah. nothing's been ruled yet. But uh, uh, you can see both sides of the coin. Sure. But uh, I. Uh, I <coughs> I would, uh, even though I think LaRoche is uh, in the right in terms of uh, not wanting to play, or, but I still, I still side with the White Sox. I wouldn't like somebody at my office right. bringing her kid all the time, so I, so I couldn't be. I'm sure he's a great kid. A lot of them like oh, the yeah, kid. It's sure. not a matter of whether they like the kid or he's a bad kid. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, for a, they, they tried it last year for 120 games. I think they gave it a good shot. Yes. And now they're coming into this year going, you know what? Maybe that's not no, such a I, good idea. I, I, we can really all see now. We we've done it. What what this can do as far as our distraction. So, uh, but and Adam Laroche can do his his thing, and he's not a bad guy for doing it. No. And uh, they're not bad for saying no. Absolutely. So that's about where it's at. That and that uh, wraps up baseball for today. But we have a couple well, more things I want to touch about. Yeah, go ahead. I was just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the uh, tragic uh, death of Trey Walker. Uh, I, maybe you heard about this. Yeah. He had the, uh, he didn't wasn't wearing a helmet and he was doing a dirt bike. Uh, he was right. dirt biking at night and apparently uh, hit a car and um, tragically lost his life. And here's a guy, 23 years old. Uh, what a, what a devastating thing to his family and to his teammates. Yes. And uh, it's something you maybe you'd have to you have to look in the corner of the paper to read about it, but. What a tragic thing! But he was only a backup player. What was he it for was, the Ravens? Was he it? was a backup for the Ravens, but I, I, I it just shows how out, out of but touch. He was so, I, I'm so out of touch that yeah. if I was making it, okay, even if he's a backup player, I'm going to oh, sure. guess he's making between five hundred thousand and a million dollars a year. But to make the, it was so exciting his life story, how he made it to the oh, absolutely. NFL, and just to make it. And uh, he was a childhood friend, and and. Uh, oh, he played on several teams with Teddy Bridgewater, yes, the Vikings. Teddy probably, Bridgewater no. and he were go way back. <clears throat> I'm just saying, I wish somebody would have suggested that now that you're an adult and you're in business, and I, I believe me, I'm yeah. for people having fun. But if you your body dictates your career, I just don't see going out on a dirt bike without a helmet. I just, I mean, not that he it wasn't like his fault or anything, but I mean, I just. I just wish I would. Who was the golfer last year that that missed? Yeah, somebody. I'm uh, trying to remember who it was. Somebody. Somebody. Trying to think of who that some, was. Yeah, that'll come to I me was, too. But yeah, somebody got bashed Jordan up Spieth? because they. It was one of the top. Rory was, McElroy. Yeah. It was Rory McElroy yeah. last year. Uh, was uh, playing soccer. Yep, he hurt himself. And hurt himself. Yeah. And we had this discussion. 
you know, oh my, you know, well, he's young. He, he should be able to do what he wants to do. But you know what? He could have had another major that that one major that he missed could be the one that ma that stops well, him from being the greatest of all time. Who knows? Well, you, getting, you never know. Getting back to Trey, though, uh, thoughts yeah. and prayers with his family. <clears throat> sure. And last, uh, last thing on the agenda, and then we threw this out real quick. Uh, RG3 heading to Cleveland Browns, maybe? What do you think about that? RG3? I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns would do something <laughs> like that. Okay. Because, you know, that's another Johnny Manziel type of risk. I on agree. The team. I, I they can't need to bring some stability to this organization. If you know what, if if the money is if it's if it's base the lowest you can pay, why not take a chance? Because they might they'd be they'd be taking a chance trying to grab somebody else. But I just thought that was interesting because I thought just yeah. what the Browns don't need is another three ring media circus right. while they're trying to get a team developed. And one of these years they're going to have a decent team on the field. But right now, signing reject guys or guys yeah. that have a, a troubled past or an injured right. past. I don't think it's a way to go. Right. So you got RG3, Johnny Manziel, and then there's still the talk of uh, Colin Kaepernick being God, traded. Please. He wants to trade anyway. Well, um, you know what? If they if they go that route, then they yeah. deserve then, exactly what they get, right? And then Ryan Fitzpatrick, where is he going to wind <laughs> up? You know, I mean, he's a, he had a career year with the Jets. M M Jets have seven million on the table uh, for him, and that's he, a, he that's you know. darn good, Ryan. Take it. I'll tell you what. And if you don't. We, Bob and I, call you down personally right here to Margarita Republic in the villages. Come down and explain yourself, Ryan, because we want some answers and we want them now. Right. Tell you what, we are out of time. So for Bob Murphy, Bob Wiltman, and Greg Melanzuk, we appreciate you paying attention to us, and we hope we'll see you next week from Shots on the Bench right here from Margarita Republic in the villages. Thanks.